Hello everyone, this is Bill with Young Crafts for Lefties. I received a request from Sue on how to do intarsia. Intarsia is part of the family of color work that lets us be able to take colors and work them within a row without having to carry extra yarn across the back. As you can see on the wrong side of this work, we have a purl side and purl sides, and we only have a very small section of it right here at the edge of each set of fabric that gets slightly thicker. With traditional color work, a lot of times people think of fair isle or stranded color work, which actually has the strand of the unused color being carried across the work like this. And what that does is it results in a thicker fabric. In Tarja, like I have here as well on this Christmas stocking, when we work it, we end up with a very small section that is thicker. So it lets us make a lighter fabric but incorporate color as well. So now the question becomes just how do you manage to take and work this without having a lot of insanity going on. And the truth of the matter is, it's pretty simple. What you need to make sure you do is pay attention each time you change colors. That is the most important thing to the whole process. Now, if we do not pay attention when we're changing colors and moving things as we need to, we will run into a problem. All I've done here is I started a sample so we had something to work off with and you didn't have to be bored watching me knit back and forth. Then I also created some intarsia bobbins myself. Um, you can buy plastic ones that you can wrap the yarn around. Personally, I don't really see the need. I can make a center pull of a small bit of yarn and you would be amazed just how far a little bit of yarn goes when you work with it. In order to do something like this, in the sample that we're going to do here, we're going to work the lower section of this. So we're going to have gray on the bottom, then we'll have gray on one side, purple, black, and then gray on this side as well. I'm going to work with several colors in one row so you can see that it really can be done very easily. So I have my first bit here and this is leading over to my full set of yarn and I'm just going to go ahead and start by knitting five stitches. Now that I've gone, gone and done those five, I'm going to add in a color. Now very often your intarsia will have charts that you'll follow. What we're really focusing on here today is just how do you incorporate these colors, what techniques you need to follow for it, not necessarily reading a chart and how do you follow it. Now here I have my yarn, I'm going to leave myself a tail, and I'm going to make sure that tail goes under the old yarn, or the color I'm no longer using. Then I'm just going to drop the gray, pick up my purple, and knit that like I would any other stitch. The trick is to hold on to your tail and not pull it out. All right. Now I'm going to take that and I'm just going to hold it really tight. Once I wrap it like I would for a knit, I draw it through and slide it off. I'll do that for five stitches. So now I have gray in, I have a gap, I have purple. Now don't worry about that gap right now because I promise you we're gonna make it go away. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna drop my purple, I'm gonna pick up some black, 
give myself a little bit of a tail. We're going to do the same thing again. Make sure the black goes under the purple. And then I have a tail, and I'm going to knit five stitches again. So now I have my five purple, I have another gap, and I have my five black. So the next I'm going to do is I need to go back to gray again. So I needed a bobbin of some of the gray because if I take this and I move it all the way over, you can see that I will have a very long strand of gray yarn running across, which I do not want to do. So once more, here's the black. I'm going to take the gray and I'm going to let it go under the black yarn. And I'm going to knit these last five stitches. Okay. Now, this little bit of black that popped through, I'm just going to tug and it's gone. So now looking at what we have, we have five gray, five purple, five black, five gray again, and we have spaces between each of these. So now I'm going to turn my work and I'm going to be working on the purl side. So let's sort out our threads and take a look at what we have. We have a working yarn, we have a tail, we have a working yarn again, we have a tail, working yarn, tail, and working yarn. Now the first thing I need to do is begin by working the purl stitches from this gray bobbin. So now I will go ahead and simply knit these stitches until I reach that gap. And don't let the fact that there is a space there scare you. I'm going to take that off. That loop got big because the tail that we had is where that started. Now I'm just going to pull that to make it go back to regular tension like the rest. And now here is the part that is most important. Now that I'm on the purl side, I am going to and I'm ready to change colors, I'm going to take this gray and I'm just going to let it lean right across this way and I'm also going to take the gray tail and do the same thing. This is what is going to let us close that gap up. Now I'll take my black working yarn and when I lift it up you can see that the gray is going to get tacked down underneath the black yarn. Put the first one through now that I've done that, I'm going to take those and I'm going to let them drop back. Give them a little tug for tension. And I will go ahead and simply knit the rest of, I'm uh, sorry, purl the rest of these black stitches until I reach the space again. Pull that one down for tension. Tug these a little bit for tension. And we'll go back and look at that when we get to the other side. Now I've reached my next color change. I'm going to do the same thing. Let that lean over. Grab my black tail. Let that lean over. Pick up my purple. And as I lift it, we can see the black is behind the purple. We want that to happen. Put my needle in to make a purl stitch. I make my purl stitch. I'm going to give both of the black a little bit of a tug. Drop the black all down now. I no longer need to tack it under because it already is. And I will work the purple stitches until the end of the purple. Be careful when you get to the last stitch of any color on your first row of it because that is the 
tail that you're working. So I'm just going to pull that for a little tension. I'm going to give these a little tug for tension. And now I will take the tip of this needle, put it under the first stitch of the gray, take my purple working yarn and purple tail, I'm just going to drop it over, pick up my gray working yarn, and now I will go ahead and purl that gray stitch. Work the last one, and now I'm going to just take each of these, give them a little tug, nothing difficult, nothing death grip, I just want to make sure that my joints are snug. And when I turn this around, we can see those gaps that we used to have down here no longer exist. They've been closed up. So now that we've seen how to close up those gaps on the pearl side, we need to be able to do that on the knit side. And the premise is very much the same. Let's sort out our yarns again. I have my gray working yarn my gray working yarn, my, sorry, purple working yarn and tail, my black working yarn and tail, my gray working yarn and tail. From here on out, we do not care about the tails unless we add in a new color. At this point, we only need to worry about the working yarns. So I will go ahead and knit the first five stitches in gray. Now we reach another point where it's creating a gap. I put my needle in first. I'm going to take the gray and I'm going to just lean it right over this way. If I do that, I will know when I pick up my purple, you can see the gray is sitting right in between the stitch we're going to work and the yarn. So when I wrap and draw through the purple for that knit stitch, the gray has been tacked down underneath it right there. So I can go ahead, give that gray a little tug, drop it back, actually, there we go. Biggest thing is once you're done working it, just drop it out of the way and then go ahead and knit the rest of them. We only need to tack it under the very first stitch and then we're good. Now I finish this purple section. I'm at a gap again. I need to make sure I close the gap so I'm just going to move the purple over. I'm going to find my black working yarn, bring it up, and again we can see I have the black yarn running right, the purple yarn running right in between the black loop and the black working yarn. So when I knit it, I have now tacked down the purple. I can drop the purple out of my way, and we don't have to worry about it. Now you can see that little purple bump there. We're going to get rid of that as soon as we finish this row. Because once I finish any row with intarsia, I like to go back and just snug things up a little bit and make everything pretty. I find that's one of the keys to making intarsia work really nicely. I finish the black. I'm going to put my needle through the first one, have the, gray, the black hang out, find my gray working yarn. Once again, when I lift it up, it's sitting right in between the two. And go ahead and knit it. I can get rid of that black yarn now. And then knit this all the way to the end. Now that I've finished that, I'm going to go through and make sure I snug everything up, pull my black working yarn that's going to make sure that I close that gap up, 
Come over here, take my purple working yarn, give it a little tug. My gray working yarn, give it a little tug. And we end up with nice, neat intarsia lines. So every time we reach a gap, we always just want to make sure we tack it over. If you follow this stim very simple method for going ahead to do intarsia, you will find that the process, while it may take a little more time, is really going to come out with the result that makes you very happy in the end. Biggest thing I can tell you is don't rush. Take your time. Become used to how you need to move the yarn each time you change colors, and you will find intarsia gives you a really lovely finished look without a lot of hassle. I hope you found this episode from Yarn Crafts for Lefties helpful. This is Bill. Happy knitting.